It's the coach, and this is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Ahead, we'll get a look at Jimmy Garoppolo and the San Francisco 49ers as they square off with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. With that, let's get up to Seattle. Standing by at CenturyLink Field, here are Brandon Gotten and Charles Davis. It is loud and it is wet here, Coach, as we welcome you inside CenturyLink Field on a patented rainy afternoon in Seattle, Washington. This crowd, as we've come to expect in recent years, as loud as any in the NFL, and they get even louder when their Seahawks are introduced. We're ready for football as the Seahawks get set to do battle with the San Francisco 49ers. Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis on hand. And Charles, we've got two NFC West teams here. Your assessment of the state of the division coming into 2019, is it the Rams to lose? We saw the changing of the guard with the Rams taking over from Seattle a couple of seasons ago. But Seattle got back in the game pretty fast, didn't they? You remember preseason last year, it was doom and gloom. End up in the playoffs. Arizona, they're kind of hitting the reset button. It's San Francisco to keep your eye on. With good health, good drafts, they could be the team that can really contend. The veteran kicker, Robbie Gold, set to get us started. And off we go from Seattle. This is taken at his four. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. The Seahawks offense led out by number three, Russell Wilson, the franchise's all-time leader in touchdown passes. And the Seahawks, they finished above 500 in all seven of Wilson's seasons. But this year, a little different. They'll work with a very young receiving core, no Doug Baldwin anymore, and what promises to be a tough NFC West. On first and ten, it's Wilson. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. And one of the big bodies helping out this offense is your boy, your potty. And all he wants to do is have running plays called, fire out, and smack people. Well, once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and ten. Wilson now going to throw again, and that's incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there, and it's third down. And a look now at the defensive starters for San Francisco. D4, the lightning quick edge rusher, has made his way from Kansas City to San Francisco, and no one happier than interior defensive lineman DeForest Buckner. That should free him up for more one-on-ones inside, and Ford's speed off the edge will surely make quarterbacks get rid of the ball a whole lot quicker. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. Now Wilson. And that will be incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. Fourth down and out is the all-pro punter from a year ago, Michael Dixon, to punt for Seattle. Back deep, Trent Taylor. And this is away, it's a high kick, and he got all of it. This is taken at the 15. Nice job bringing that one back, 14 on the return. And the Niners will go on offense, first and 10. So now here are the 49ers under third-year coach Kyle Shanahan. And they're led out by a guy who learned from one of the great ones in his first few years in Tom Brady. This is Jimmy Garoppolo. When you're back up to one of the all-time great players, if you don't spend time picking that guy's brain or just watching and observing how he does things to increase your game, then you've wasted that time. I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo is that type of a player. I think those lessons learned have a chance to transmit themselves very well. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Garoppolo going to hand this one to Coleman. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Here we 
here we go, here we go. Here we go, deep. All day, deep touch. They'll try and run for it here. It's Coleman. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. A nice first down pickup on a gain of six. Well, remember, Tevin Coleman was in the two-headed backfield in Atlanta during his four years there, along with Devontae Freeman. Now he joins a crowded backfield in San Francisco. But in Atlanta, he played under offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan, and then, of course, Shanahan becomes a 49er head coach, and he made it a point to go out and snag his former running back because he really likes his 26-year-old ball carrier. Play fake there to Coleman. Now Garoppolo. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. And a look at Seattle's defense. It's hard to believe that a guy can get double-digit sacks in the NFL, and we can still describe him as raw, but that's the case for Ziggy Ansah, who went to BYU. Mainly as a track and field guy, gravitated towards football, became a starter for one season, and then moved into the NFL. A lot of potential left to scratch for him. A lot more pass rush moves left to be added. But he is a scary, scary prospect. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. And that'll be incomplete. Now they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty. And it's fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant to the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. On now is the 27-year-old rookie, Mitch Wisnowski, to punt. Back deep for the Seahawks, Tyler Lockett. And they will get to this one and down it at the 13-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little bit jumpy. You do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. Just like us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three and out. And now they have that opportunity. Uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'm trying to do better here. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said write down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it'll be a long afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. Now it's Carson. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. On second and 11 now. Wilson, and he finds Penny. Give him two yards on that play, and they're going to face a third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. 56 to Mike. 
Out of the gun, here's Wilson. Rolling to his left. He can run for it, and he will. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. The rushing numbers for Wilson may be down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. That's something you have to be aware of as a defense and have to find a way to account for him. And if you're not going to use a spy, you're telling your guys to keep your eyes on him because when he breaks out and makes plays like that, all he does is hurt you. Have to at least be able to contain him somewhat. There they could not. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Watch the run, watch the run. From the shotgun, Wilson, he'll find Metcalf. Now that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. Wilson. It's caught. Lock it. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. D Ford with a big-time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll kick it away for the second time. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Now this is fielded in the end zone. Give him 11 yards that time on the return, and the 49ers will take over deep in their own territory. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? Here we go. They begin the drive with Coleman. And some room to run now. And able to get it across the 20 before they get to him. First down San Francisco. The pick up 14 yards. That's his longest run of the first quarter. And Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. And they got to the perimeter. So that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside. But it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. Right back to Coleman here on first down. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 15 for the Niners there and a first down. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, it's working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural go, light best. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll run with Coleman on first down. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off near the 42. game for both of these teams is going to be affected as the game goes along. It's not looking like the rain's going to let up anytime soon, so that might mean a few more wobbly passes and wide receiver slips, and this one winds up getting intercepted. The Seattle offense. 
defense now set to come back out on the field. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? He's able to get six. A nice pickup down to the 21. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. On second down and four, Wilson will swing into the hands of Metcalf. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. From 21 yards away, as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right? RAC. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. Well, that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them. In plus territory, excellent field position. Two plays later, pay dirt. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Set to take over again here on offense, Jimmy G in the 49ers. And he'll look to rebound from the early interception that led to six points the other way. And when he threw the interception and he had to come to the sideline, I guarantee his first thought wasn't about the interception itself, but what could result. And I know he was thinking to himself, come on, defense, bail me out. Well, they weren't able to in this situation. Now he's got to go out and atone for it himself, but he can't force things. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 15 for the Niners there to first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Garoppolo now, first down throw. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After 1-7-0 on EA Sports. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Coleman. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down now, it's Coleman. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a game considering the blitz that they just had against them. Throwing his Garoppolo on third down. Escaping the pressure right. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. And partner, I would guess that in his headset, he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. Hey. 
So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice and ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this score will stay right where it is. It was a kicker from that distance, 56, 57 yards. So many things you got to worry about, but I am a little surprised he didn't get it there. Yeah, with the way kickers are nowadays, we're surprised anything under 65 that it doesn't get at least to the crossbar. But remember this, you have to drive it a little bit lower in order yeah. to make that distance, and you also have to be worried about the interior rush that they can get their hands on it. So that's why those stronger kickers nowadays who can pop it up in the air and still travel and carry it, that's who you're looking for. Well, now they'll start three yards shot a midfield after that long 57-yard miss. Now left side on the swing pass. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. First down, Seattle, 16 yards the game there. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. Scrimmage the 37 on first and 10. Get ready, get ready, get ready. This is Carson. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. The officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. From the gun, to give to Penny. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all, but they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. And he's got the hook up to Moore, and they've got it inside the 10 at the eight. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. When you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Here's Wilson. The rookie DK Metcalf, the intended receiver. But now it's third and goal. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And uh, who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield, but when push came to shove, they stood their ground, and now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. On comes the Seahawk kicker here on fourth down. It's Jason Myers. This from 25 yards out. And Myers able to knock it through, and the lead moves to 10 zip. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made him kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. This one fielded at the five. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Kevin Coleman and the rest of the offense making their way back out. And he has enjoyed some solid groundwork 
And some good holes have been created by the guys up front. Almost get the sense that their game plan is working to perfection, that what they've worked on in practice all week, all right, we they've just translated and taken it out onto the field in this ball game. And boy, they're liking what they're seeing. They'll start out on the ground with Coleman. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. On second and nine, Garoppolo. And he finds his target. It's Marquise Goodwin. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 22 yards there, a first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. down Coleman and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage a loss of a full three yards and now it's second down we think Brandon I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives they're not just holding the line because they're doing their job but they're doing more than that aren't they they're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield and a great example right there for the loss on the tackle have that type of easy access back to the quarterback. Never bought the play-action fade. Well, that last sack, it puts Garoppolo and the 49ers in a tough spot. They face a third and long. On third and long, it's Garoppolo. And that is incomplete. So a couple of first downs on this drive, but it's looking like another empty possession. And those empty possessions are certainly starting to pile up. So the adjustments that teams talk about all the time have to be taking place. They've got to analyze what's breaking down and figure a way to fix it. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And you can't do it much better than that. This ball kicks out of bounds at the four-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five, superb. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they will start this drive with just terrible field position backed up inside their own five. But we have seen teams be bold here and take shots, right? Sometimes you go max protection, make it a one receiver route, and take your shot downfield and see what happens. And occasionally, we've seen success occur. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. 10-0, our score. Three, 
A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. They'll try to get forward, but he's going to be stopped in his tracks at about the three. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. Here's Carson. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Now here's Michael Dixon standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. To return is Taylor. A nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And the Niners set up well. They take over first and 10 on the short side of the field. Tevin Coleman and the rest of the offense making their way back out. He's doing his thing. He's got some good yardage, but his team right now in the second quarter, zero points. Just not a complete formula. Half of it's there, being able to run the ball and set the tone. What if they may have to go to some play action, throw off the run game, go, and try and get the ball in the end zone? I was just going to ask you that same thing. Maybe you use that run now to set up the pass, right? I would think so because the run has been very effective for them. Deep ball for Goodwin. And this is taken in at the five. A big play there just before halftime. 41 yards for an offense that has not found the end zone yet. That's a big play. There's the spark right there. The big play that they needed. Now they've got to go ahead and finish this drive and put this ball in the end zone. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. It's Coleman here, and he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Taking it in from two yards out as they are now on the board here in the first half. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yeah. of a half, heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football, full half to be played. back out there to boom this one away maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss this will be fielded on the back line of the end zone Let's go, Let's go. the Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field now you're under a minute to go here in the half field position not really in your favor but still time to try and move the ball and get in field goal range yeah you've got the lead it's definitely a thought let's go ahead and try and increase it but at the same time, I don't like the odds. I don't like where they are on the field. Got the lead. They've done well in the first half. Don't mess it up and go into halftime looking at each other wondering what if. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Let him know, let him know. Let him know, let him know. They'll keep it on the ground again here. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports halftime report. This one has been a hard-hitting affair to this point, and you got to expect we'll see more of the same in the second half. And to bring the action your way, let's get it right back out to Brandon Goddard. 
All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Here comes the 49ers offensive unit as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Here we go, here Typically, we go, go. what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. On second and seven, Garoppolo. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A game there of 30 big ones. It's your first drive of the second half. You're down on the scoreboard. Maybe you just say to yourself, let's take a shot, see if we can shake them up. And boy, they hit that one. Here we go. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. On first down, here's Breedham. Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. What's the old expression, three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now, we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. On play action, it's Garoppolo. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off at about the 31. possession of the third quarter and interception so maybe a second half tone setter indeed and not the tone they wanted to set that's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field a real dud for that one Has that happened to you before no but i've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. They'll try and get the run game going. This is Penny, and this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. From the 31, Wilson. He's got the tight end, Vanette. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. That'll be a pickup of five on the keeper. It's second down. On the delay, here's Carson. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to observe the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. Go, 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 go. 
So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, this from 34. Myers' kick is good. And that'll open the lead up to a touchdown now at 13 to six. So the drive stalls out inside the 15 yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Here comes Jimmy Garoppolo now to lead his offense back out there. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. down Garoppolo he's gonna loft one deep left side here that's gonna be knocked away and incomplete he was trying to get it to Jarek McKinnon there and that'll bring up second down it's been this way most of the afternoon hasn't it this secondary really put this receiving core on lockdown listen they've worked together like a basketball team that's playing excellent defense great communication doesn't matter whether it's man or zone and especially against deep balls, as we saw there, they're not giving up anything to him. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Big play coming up. Here's third and 10. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. And able to haul it in is Kittle. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. So they did not bring pressure, and turns out probably a bad idea. Yeah, he had time to stand in the pocket and deliver a strike. So I'm wondering if they're going to note that, and next time just go ahead and bring that pressure. Garoppolo now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and ten. This is Coleman, and that play went nowhere. Losing yardage, it'll be back at the 36. A loss of two there, second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. it to the tight end Kittle and that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 16 and the game just keeps evolving big guys running those corner routes so difficult to cover First down. 
It's Coleman, and he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Here's Garoppolo to throw. And he's got it. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Back of the end zone, could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. That's a good job there, creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now, since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. This a 33-yard attempt. And the 14-year trusty veteran able to knock it through. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. CD, you know there were quite a few Bears fans back in January saying, why didn't we hold on to that Robbie Gold guy? Well, it's a legitimate question. 33 of 34 for San Francisco 2018. The crazy stat of the year, he missed more extra points, two, than he did field goals, one, in the 2018 season. gold after splitting the uprights to kick this one away this one taken just inside the 10 solid return pretty good field position they'll start at the 32 yard line here come the Seahawks now set to take over on offense and they're not going to play this conservative I don't think they had the field goal last time and they're up but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone oh I agree with you totally no one is, goes out on the field and says all right let's just settle for three except in certain situations trying to ice a game that sort of deal most of the time it's end zone and that's what you're thinking and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one yeah no quarterback ever goes out there saying hey, let's get three right <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've ever Met. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face match. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. Now Wilson. Underneath pass here to Van Ed, and he is down at the 48. A pickup of four that started at 148 yard line and ended at the other. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Wilson leaves this one with Penny. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add a little, little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. Throw on first down with Wilson. He's going to take off with it. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And down to the 27-yard line. Opted to run for it. The decision a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. Partner as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. Wilson now 
9 of 15 throwing the ball, 60%, and it's first and 10. Wilson after the play fake to Carson. He'll buy some time right, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him on what will be the final play of quarter number three. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. So after the sack here, second and 14. Watch the pass. To throw is Wilson. Leaves it for Penny. He'll get a couple yards on that one. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. On third down, Wilson. And this is going to be incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the leg's still there. This has been a tough game. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And that'll make this a seven-point game. But from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken at his four. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. The San Francisco offense getting their last-minute instructions before they take over here. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way we do, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll bring up a second and 13. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. To throw, it's Garoppolo. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. And it is true. You can draft the fastest. You can draft the most athletic guys. But if they don't know the art of positioning, sometimes it's all for naught. In this case, in the right spot, help force the incompletion. Well, had his hands on it for a second. Would have been a tough catch, though. Falls incomplete. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. First down, San Francisco to pick up 14 yards. Well, Pettis is quickly becoming the number one receiving option for Jimmy Garoppolo. Into last year, John Lynch said that they loved the way he closed the season, really came on late. Remember, this is a guy that they traded up to get at number 44 back in 2018 out of the University of Washington. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Now Garoppolo leaves for McKinnon on the draw. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. Now after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Here 
The last run got six, now second and four. On second down, it's Coleman. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Seven yards there and a first down. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. Garoppolo on the draw to Coleman. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. On second and two, Garoppolo. This is caught. A big play there for the Niners. 43 yards. Well, what do you think? Maybe got away with one? I mean, he's thrown two picks already. That looked pretty dangerous. And it had a little hang time on it. So what he needs to do right now, hug it out a little bit with his guy. Because he went up and made a play on the football and kept him from potentially throwing that third interception. There was some trust in there. There was also some hope. A looming decision to make on the conversion, down seven. But first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. That would give to the big fullback use check. And across the goal line, into the end zone, touchdown 49ers. Kyle Juszczyk taking it in. As they can now even this game here in the fourth quarter with the extra point. And boy, that was a heavy set. I think they had three tight ends out there. The fullback, they just, you knew what they were going to do. Yeah, they weren't trying to fool anybody at all, were they? There was none of this show you heavy set, bootleg it out. No, no, no. Big guys up front, hand it to the big guy in the backfield. A very important extra point there, up and good. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. So that one, an eight-play drive, it spans 75 yards. And the end result for the 49ers, a touchdown. the kickoff now all even here in this fourth quarter this will be taken to the back of the end zone and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line the Seattle now ready to march out of the field and after the field goal last time we'll see what they can get here and at least they got points out of the last drive Charles I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They weren't fan. happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Going quickly out wide to Moore. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people at the block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play. And sometimes it can break big. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Ten yards and a Seattle first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Jack Whiskey Tart. And the return stops just a few yards shy of midfield. They'll spot the ball at the 47-yard line. So how about that for a momentum switch? 
We're in the fourth quarter and it's a tie game. You've got to take care of the football here. Now their opportunity to take the lead right out the window and everything is flipped in the other direction. And San Francisco gets set to go here. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown. And now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Good starting field position for the 49ers as they have it first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. Coleman now. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Coleman. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. First down, San Francisco. The pickup, 14 yards. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon. And I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's make these babies cry all the way back home, yo. Let's make these babies cry all the way back home. Get Garoppolo gives to Breda. Had a pretty good run there as he gets seven down to the 33. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. On second down, it's Coleman down to the 30 after a gain of three. Getting down to the good stuff, all tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's 49er football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They will run again with Coleman. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. So a big kick coming for Robbie Gold. This for the lead in the final stages. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And they have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. Big kick right there to give them the lead in the fourth, but there is still time left for a final drive. Did they score too soon? Post-game will tell us, right? Depending on what happens on this drive, that's how we'll analyze it. If the other team scores, they scored too soon. If they somehow hold on, they manage the clock exactly right. Now it's gold after splitting the uprights to kick this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. So Russell Wilson in the offense. Down by a field goal. A minute 53 remaining. And they need at minimum three points out of this as they come up first and 10. What? What is? Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. He'll find Metcalf. And he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. He's back to throw. Pardon me, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. They'll look to throw. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Moore. Wilson trying to urge his guys to go faster and get set at the line. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. Throwing now is Wilson. And he's got Lockett. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. They get 17 on that one. Move the chains. First down, Seahawks. 
And they got exactly what they wanted there. Out route, catch, get out of bounds, stop the clock. And I have to criticize defense here because you know the situation. You want to keep them inbounds and have the clock run. So I'm sitting on the outside portion of the field and not letting them throw an out route. Throw anything inside and I'll make the tackle. An out route? Yeah, that's not the way you're supposed to play it. The previous play is under review. Wilson going to lead his guys up first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Now Wilson. And his throw is incomplete. The intended receiver was DK Metcalf. And that'll bring up second down. So he's unable to complete it there. And just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. And it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. And a second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Third and long coming up defensively. You pressure the quarterback or drape all over the passing lane? Yes. That's exactly both. what you do. It's both because they're not mutually exclusive. They may have been at one time in football, but not anymore. You want to have that pressure. And if you have a big-time pass rusher, send them after the quarterback and then make sure you blanket the field. Back to throw. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. And now here comes their final timeout as they take it with eight ticks remaining. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to potentially send us to overtime. And his kick here is good. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period. This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. Tie game, and barring something incredible here, we're likely headed to overtime. And just a couple of scenarios here to keep in mind. One, if you want to be really aggressive, you do throw the Hail Mary and see if you can get something downfield. What would you do? What I would do is either hand it off inside or more likely I take a knee and let the clock run out. Because if I'm back there trying to throw and a sack happens, the ball comes free, I can lose the game here. If I get to overtime, I can still win it. Let's see if they are in line with Charles Davis. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. This will be fielded at the eight. Then it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The San Francisco offense getting their last-minute instructions before they take over here. Except for their first drive here in overtime, and this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day, but I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets double, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team, and that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. And it's been loud in here so far. No gain on the play there. Second down. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. First throw of OT for Garoppolo. 
The tight end Kittle has it on the left side. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Kittle last year, what a season. 1,377 receiving yards, an NFL record for tight ends en route to his first Pro Bowl. Not bad for the former fifth-round pick. As you, I remember that game December against Denver. He had that monster first half, 210 yards, did not have a single catch in the second half, but still those 210 yards were just four yards shy of Shannon Sharp's single game record for a tight end. A first down run, good for about three, second and seven coming up. Three yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. But he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. What will they draw up to try to keep this opening drive of overtime moving? Third and seven. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Well, I know you're toward the middle of the field here, but still, fourth down this distance, you got to punt it right. That's definitely the first instinct because you say, okay, let's just play some field position, make sure we don't lose the game here, turn it over in a key spot. But if you feel really good about your trigger guy, if you feel great about him, you might want to leave the ball in his hands and let him work his magic. Here comes the 49ers punter now. On for a very important punt here in overtime. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it, but they turned it back over to them, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? Yeah, part one is done, now part two. Now Wilson. He'll run it, and he'll get nothing out of that one. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. And while he did a good job of sliding around in the pocket, there was nowhere to go with the football, so he had to take off and try and run. He just got back to the line of scrimmage, no gain. On second down now, it's Carson. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action, hit them over the top. It's caught. Lock it. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. Wilson to lock it there for the Seahawks first down. Charles, you get into these overtime situations, that's not a bad guy to dial into. Well, when you have to have plays, especially in a spot as you just described, we're an OT, you've got to go to the guys you can trust and you know are going to make the plays. Well, they say, it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And nothing but daylight ahead. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and a game winner in OT.
legacy and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime, a little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing palatable. I just want you to pay for my meal later. Hey, you really just wanted four quarters what you <laughs> wanted, but how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Seahawks here as we say so long from Seattle.